Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakes. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lilion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Our training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to work the work of my Lord on this earth, proving that before Lord God the Father, as Abraham proved that he loveth Lord God with all of his heart. And thus he was being called as friend. In the like manner even we need to prove. And we need to make him to believe that we love him. And Lord God the Father in heaven has given to us. If you would love him three times for the denial of Peter, he says in John chapter 21 verses 15 through 18. Then feed my flock. When Christ our Lord our God is asking about agape love, philos love is replied by Peter. When Christ our Lord our God asks in the terms of philos love, then Peter knows and realizes. And he says, Lord, you know all these things. Till we could make God the Father to believe upon us that we love him, Till we could come back and prove our worth for all the cares which is taking care. And the only thing what we need to take care and guard, it is his word to honor above his name. Therefore, Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have guarded the doctrine. That's the problem in our present Christendom. Even, Sam, in, even in First Kings, King Solomon prays to God the Father that the covenant of Lord God the Father is abiding upon them, that those who walk with him in perfect heart. And the great pleasure, great riches, what we have been given, the plausious riches through Christ having access through one spirit, through God the Father, in his royal family of Lord God, and to come in search like the way how Queen Sheba came all the way. And when she comes and looks and with all the hard questions what she wants and many more things. When all those things have been cleared, she says, what I have heard is not even half. Even likewise on this earth, while we are still in this pilgrimage trip, we have come to ask many questions before God the Father. And his secrets have been given to them who love to walk, proving that Lord God the Father has trusted them in giving this riches to our hands. And in this church age, it is a player of ultimate privileges moving from glory to glory in the image of Lord God the Father on behalf of his Son to conform to his Son's image. So dear brethren, keeping these things in mind, we have many things to learn. First and foremost, we need to change our thinking. We need to make our frame of reference in the fellowship of Bible doctrine in the original languages of the truth. The things that have been communicated for us in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. 
Each and every word of the Lord of our God is pure. We read in Psalms 19. One word of the Lord of our God is enough for us to entirely change our life. Likewise, we find in the 66 books many words which are so unique to its extent. Though the philosophical world of this earth has taken the words being copied from the Bible, and the people are thinking, looking upon those standards of philanthropical life, they are able to perform the golden rule to be executed. But yet we have the treasury of gold. This treasury, it is an unending mine. No matter however you may dig, no matter however you may take, it's an unending mine. Thus we need to take every word in the proper terms of exegesis. Without knowing your life in exegesis, as Christ my Lord, my rock has stated for us in John 1.18, you cannot come to know what is your true life. Neither you will understand to prove that you are loving Lord God. And the way how Christ my Lord asked Peter, if he would ask you, do you love him, can you say if he lost love to God rather than agape? If agape love, it is meant to say, 35% of marks are enough to pass. Philos love meant to say, Lord, I have 70% of marks. How could a man change from agape to philo? Until and unless he has a living exhibition of his life that he is a true Christian gentleman on this earth. Showing forth the qualities of Philippians 4.8, and we have expounded that by dividing into three categories. Ascribing to God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit long back. Until he could be in those terms, till he could grow up to understand the burden laid down of him on this earth, till he could analyze and look, as Apostle Paul says, I have fought a good fight. What a great words they are. Have you ever fought? And he has guarded the doctrine, that's what it says in the Greek. He has taken to the complete care, because he knew very well. When Christ our Lord our God stated to him, My grace is sufficient for you, that's what the word archeo is all about, we derive for the word sufficient. That meant to say what? His independent existence of this world. He has his self-sufficiency in the Lord God. He doesn't require anyone else. If ever he lives, he lives for Christ. If he dies, it's for the greater glory of God the Father. That's it, he says. Therefore, he says, when he's learned the lesson, my grace is sufficient for you. So this man knows the details of life right from his saving grace till to his dying grace. There is nothing that could hinder him. And thus he goes on to take care of the word of the Lord of a God. And thus in his dying declaration in 2 Timothy 4, 2, he says, Preach the word, Kerusathon Lagan. And he says, I have fought a good fight. I have guarded the doctrine. I have finished my race. And that's the very purpose for every believer to look and to understand the way when Apostle Paul says, I imitate God the Father and follow my Christ, and you look unto me and you follow me. And how many great examples are not there for us in the Bible? Today we shall expound some of the things from Jeremiah. The way how they said, we will obey the voice of the Lord. We will swear by the true Lord. We will say that he is a faithful Lord God. And whatsoever he does and he tells for us, we will perform that. And yet, what did they end up? They did not obey the voice of the Lord. Even we, by our Christian profession, we may say, Lord, we will honor thy name. Lord, we will have a good life for you on this earth. We will see that we are guarding your word. But at the end, we are not able to stand up and tell the truth because we don't have true heart of repentance, true heart of change of mind. Neither we have true fear towards the Lord God. We are just minding before to come to Lord God the Father as Christianity, one among the religions in this world. Forgetting that Christianity is a relationship with that great Lord God the Father because of his dear beloved son's work on the cross. And thinking that our life is like the moral standards 
and making to enter into the Shekinah glory alien things, prostitute things, harlotry things. Not only your physical prostitution, but also your spiritual prostitution and mental prostitution as well. And anything that is alien will come near to this tabernacle. Lord God says they shall be put to death in simple terms. You will be put to death. And though Lord God the Father has given to us such great care to take care of the Shekinah glory indwelling in us, though Lord God the Father has given to us much more than the most and entrusted in us such care to prove that we love Him, that's Philo's love. Even we read in 1 Corinthians 16 22, if anyone doesn't love the Lord God, that let them be anathema, cursed ones, the entire life, what they think they can give to Lord God as a living sacrifice, it is not acceptable before the presence of Lord God the Father to give his life as a sacrifice. That's what it meant to say, anathema. And there we don't find the word agape being used. It's philos. Lord God wants us to greater to do greater things than what he has done. Doesn't he say, if you have faith enough, you can do greater things than me? You have been called to do greater things than me. If it's agape, 35%, you require to do philos, 70%. And how much are we really guarding his word? We say to God the Father, we are your creation. We say to God the Father, we have been made in your image. We say to everything. And we come to Christianity as a religion, not in our relationship with him. Therefore, there's a lot of difference between knowing God and knowing about God. That's what many people don't understand about these words. If you know God, if you know Lord God, you will be very far away from knowing about Lord God. Christianity has come to the terms to talk today in the present Christendom in the, in the minds of this Christless apostasy terms leading to cults, leading to heretics, leading to heresy. Do you know what they teach? They are teaching to you constantly, dear brethren, knowing about Lord God. Even the pastor teachers do not know. If they don't have this bona fide gift, they would never come to teach in truth. It's a complete consecration to the Lord to give their life as a living sacrifice. What does Lord God demand? Teach them the word. That's what his standards are. He hasn't changed from his standards. It's what we, our thinking has been changed from those standards. And we think we can give some to Lord God. Nothing you can give. It is what we have to do. And what is that? Teach the word. Preach the word. Have Kerusothon Lagan. That's the great dying declaration of a man who has written to us half of the New Testament in his epistles to prove what is the Christian way of life in this great mystery doctrine of the church age. And several great men who have occupied the pulpits, knowing not what is the true Christian way of life, they still love to go through denominations, forgetting the exegeomai standards. And yet, Lord God is still gracious. Every day we are enjoying His mercies. Every day He is bestowing upon us His kesad, the unfailing love of Lord God. He remembers us that we are of dust and He gives a grace for you so that today at least you would change up your life. Today at least you would wake up from the standards of milk and understand the standards of bread and come to become like the standards of strong meat and become communicators of Bible doctrine in your practical life, in your holy manner walk of life. And enter as disciple, grow up and mature as grammatia, as scribes. And in return, go to make disciples of all the nations on this earth. And if you don't make up your thorough inquiry into the obligations, what is that is hindering you to become grammatia? What is that hindering you to join as a disciple? If you don't wake up to those standards, you cannot prove that you love my Lord. Neither he can believe you that he can love you.
Do you not? The cunning nature of man, how does it look? If you trust your friend and give him some money as if the point he can return you back on the date what he has said and if he doesn't pay you back and again he's been absconding. Again after a year or two years he comes without money and again he's asking you some money. Will you ever give him that money? You will have constantly in your mind. The first time when I gave him money he did not turn up back. If I give him this money will he come back again? This is the tendency of human nature. How much more it should be with Lord God. When he has given his great care to take care and entrusted us that we are his friends and we shall do whatever Lord God has set for us on this earth and given to God this word, make disciples of the nations, go and preach the truth. And for the pastor teachers, the right burden is to daily teach the word of the Lord of a God with proper exegeomai, not even letting go iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, but rightly dividing the word of truth in dispensations with proper isogogics, categories, and exegesis. When has entrusted you with such great burden on this earth, and if you would show, my Lord, your true character of essence in your roles in nature, the way how the people said, even in Isaiah 48, 5, we read, they thought, we made up with our own hand, fetishes, that's nothing but idols. We will bow down to it. We have created God. <laughs> Long back, Lord God says to them, right from the beginning, it is I who have declared to you who is Lord God, not that you can make with your own hands molten images, and you can bow down to them and make them as gods to you. Doesn't he say for us? Long back again he says in Jeremiah for them. These are hard hardened people. They will not come to believe the truth. Neither they will understand this truth. And all the teachings of these people. What they have become. They have become like dross he says. Worth for nothing. And their entire life has become draws. They love to trust draws. They love not to make up their life for the true standards of Bible doctrine, what they have to be in Christ. And yet they think they can be trusted. They have been given this great care. No way, dear brethren. You need to wake up. If you're not making disciples, if they're not become grammateers, in return, if they don't go and make disciples, you need to be aware about these things and you need to wake up. Where is your life? Where are you standing? You need to wake up. If you don't love to prove your love to God the Father and win His confidence, how could you trust you? Therefore He gave them long back a caution of warning. These are not gods. These are man-made. These are not gods. These are the grooves of your fetishes. Even in the present Christendom, they are thinking the order of worship, which is nothing but proscune, to bow down and kiss or to fall oneself into prostrate. They have made up to themselves this grown images, fetishes, and they have come to order of weekly one service. They are thinking that what the Bible demands, come weekly ones pay, and pay monthly ones your tithe and come yearly ones for your festivals. This is what they have made up with their own hands. They are bowing down to this religion, man-made customs. The reason is they haven't gone for proper exegiomai. The order of the pulpit should be exegiomai. Without exegiomai, there is no theology that is the word of God to be studied. Without word of God, there is no life for you on this earth, even bios as well as zao. You will be like the way what we call foxes in the deserts. Your life doesn't have any meaning. What for you are living on this earth? For whom you are living on this earth? Just to fulfill the chemical reactions of your flesh, either to the terms of adrenaline or testosterone. And for what you are living for, your appetites, no matter whatever they may be for you. Sometimes even unbelievers are far more morally superior than you as Christians who share the name of my Christ among you. 
dear brethren the great terms what the word of the lord our god calls for us we need to be available to the praise of his glory according to his mind not and never our mind the greater you as a pastor teacher don't come up to stand in the gap to make an hedge the greater you reject the right word of the lord our god and whatsoever you are doing you are polluting the name of my christ because you haven't come to cleanse yourself in the fiery furnace of bible doctrine and this is what these people they are we find in the word of my christ and dear brethren when the word of the lord of our god teaches to us what is the order of pulpits what is that we need to study what is that we need to do and yet there are many people who love not to go and teach what is the word of truth in jeremiah 5:1 he teaches to us run to and fro through the streets of jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man if there be a man any one that execute a judgment if there be a man that seeketh the truth i will pardon this city since in and around the world in the great plan of lord god the father he could find certain men who are doing his will that's the reason we are still delayed in our rapture because the will of lord god the father is that none to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his word and thus he has given this great privilege we will find with like minded men in the power of lord god the holy spirit doing his will and that's the reason why we have been pardoned and remember if you don't prove you are worthy as apostle paul says in colossians 1 walk worthy of your calling in lord god if you don't walk worthy in the lord god though he is the first among all the creation of this church age to have the resurrection body and we will follow him yet we will be the men not even worthy in comparison to queen sheba or the people of nineveh when they will stand up against us at the judgment seat during that time of hypostatic union of my christ solomon was more greater than solomon was my christ and more greater than jonah was my christ at those people rejected him today though we have the completed canon of scripture and given besides that the player of polchimo privileges the indwelling trinity the completed canon of scripture above all the bonafide gift of the pastor teacher for us thus given much and expected much yet if we don't walk according to the terms of bible doctrine we will face a greater judgment than this then the people of israelites what they have gone through and he says for double i have paid back for your sins and now i will come past you with mercy he says in isaiah chapter 40 greater than that it will be for us do you know why because we are inexcusable if we don't prove our worthy if we don't prove our philos love we are already cursed this is anathema and how many days more you want to kid yourself you have been loved by lord god by doing his will and if you don't search and examine yourself whether that will is in accord with bible doctrine whether that will is in accord with the word of the lord of a god or what are we performing it's just a dross because the right work for pastor teacher is to daily teach the word and the right work for the believer is to carry up his cross and follow my christ conforming to the image of his dear beloved son and looking upon the time you should be communicators by that we meant to say joined as disciples grown up as grammatias and in return you should be making disciples and for in return you are making disciples you should prove your testimony of love and that testimony of love is what we call that god the father has believed that you love him and the way how you love him you will give your life as an entire sacrifice to christ wherever you go in every place you go you love to spread forth the gospel of my christ 
You love to make them disciples. You have nothing business but making disciples. That's what your testimony would be. You'd be having a great zeal more than Apostle Paul. Because wherever he went, he went along to teach the word of Christ. He did not go for any other purpose. His life itself, he says, For me to live is Christ and to die is profitable. If ever I live, I live to do the will of Lord God the Father. If I die, it's profitable. And he says, It's better for me to go back and be with Lord God the Father. But for your sakes, I'm abiding in this tabernacle in Philippians 1. Do you know what a privilege it would be? So that your joy might be great. So that your peace and comfort could be great. And yet in search of truth, people are searching lies. Because your translations will not give you this essence. You need to come back and dig the word in the original languages of the scriptures. If we aren't digging the word of the Lord of God in the original languages of the scriptures, we lose it. We lose it to a greater extension on this earth of our responsibility. Thus, dear brethren, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit has prepared and kept for us on today's date, his spiritual manna, we shall come and take after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great pile of wonders of his word. And looking upon this great word, we shall come back and learn what is the great truth of Bible doctrine that has been given for us in this church age? Because to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord of a God, the right duty of the pastor teacher, which is every day ongoing and not seen, it is an unseen battle in this angelic conflict. We need to prepare the army of the Lord to the praise of his work. Foxes in the deserts, neither dogs or dumb dogs cannot prepare. We need to match the truth. We need to prove the worth of our calling. Today or tomorrow, you need to come back and face in the mirror of the word of the Lord of God, your internal man, your inner man, the soul and spirit. The sooner the better. And how many days more you want to still look your life in lies? That's left to you. That's purely left to you. We are not at all concerned about that. It's your terms and it's your time. It's your privilege. It's your evolution. The greater you love to spend your time in lies, that's left to you. We cannot come. It's all left to you. It's your life. It's your privilege. Because Lord God the Father has did the same thing to even the creation, the Lucifer angel, the Satan. It gave it, it gave, he gave him its volition. Even we have our free will of evolution. We are not forcing you, but we are just warning you from the Bible. That's it. What will be your futurity? Therefore, in, in Revelation 22, 11, he says, The one who wants to be unjust, let him be unjust. The one who wants to be rufal, let him be rufos. That means the one who want to be adikias, let him be more adikiate. And the one who want to be rufo, let him be rufos. If you want to be by your birth still crooked mentality, let him be. Let him go and defile other people as well. Let him be still eti. But the one who want to be hagios, let him be more hagios. The one who want to be righteous, dikaias funi, let him be more righteous. I have the works of them in my hand. I will reward them according to the works. And we are dealing with such a true Lord of God, dear brethren, as David gives a great caution of warning to his son Solomon, saying, Be aware about this Lord God. There is no other Lord God apart from him. He is the only true Lord. Don't think you can mock him. And he says he knows even the motivations, imaginations behind your thoughts. Be careful with him. You may appear something beautiful outward, but he knows what are you, what do you think. Where is your frame of reference? How you would stand before his presence? He knows about you very well. So be careful. Don't kid with him. 
If the present Christendom pastor teachers were reigning in their terms called as Ravadas, which is no way concern for them to be the title, as reverends and doctorates or this and that, which is nothing but Sherat, if they would come to their senses and if they would look, they cannot kid with Lord God, they would come back to the title of pastor teacher and they would daily come to train you up in the word of the Lord of a God, carrying their cross humbly as long as they have been kept alive on this earth proving their love like the way have Christ asked Peter do you love me then go and tend the flock do you love me then go and feed the flock do you love me then go and tend the flock Bosco Paiman Bosco feed tend feed he did not say to go and do your gimmicks over there pastoral gimmicks or entertaining qualities who requires that and the completion of the can of scripture would arrive, he has said long back in John Gospel 21 for us. Feed, tend, feed, Bosco, Paiman, Bosco. He did not go to say, do miracles, do signs, do wonders. And if these people would come back to the senses to look, their frame of reference is not in the original languages of the scriptures. Their teachings are not in accord with Bible doctrine because we can say their translations could be correct or good, but the translations will not give you the depth of essence what every word of the Lord of a God has been recorded and kept for us in the original languages of the scriptures. The failure of expounding the word from the original language of the scriptures has led many people to have these errors upon errors what they are facing every day in their pulpits. When will you prepare for the battle of the Lord, for the day of the Lord? When will you use the sword of the Spirit? And you haven't known your true life yet because you're still minding the earthly things. And we need to look our Lord God will give a great caution of warning for us in Psalms 119 in verse number 119. The wicked he will never like. Anything that is against exegeomai, not taken from the original languages of the word, that's wicked. Therefore we read in, in Proverbs 15.22 as well, multitude of counselors. No, the word doesn't give that essence. In the Hebrew it says, your frustrated thoughts will break intimacy with Lord God. What are those frustrated thoughts? Without exegesis, any thought you have, it's a frustrated thought. And though there may be many teachers, if they're not in one accord of Bible doctrine in exegeomai, then that counsel will not stand. And from Genesis 1-1 to Revolution, used 40 different authors in different times of the time, over 3,000 years of coverage. All in one spirit, they, pro they, pro they preach the truth. They all stood for one importance, honor Lord's word above his name, that's it. Christ himself prayed for us, sanctify them through the truth, the word is the truth. And these other people will guard the truth. In everything you go back, it's the same importance of daily studying the word of the Lord of our God, daily renovating the standards of your thinking, only with the truth, the truth, the truth. And to exegeomai, this truth is our life. Anything that is against the truth, that is without exegesis, Lord God says, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to me. And if you are not exegeting the word in your pulpits, then the thoughts of you are wicked. They cannot be counted worthy for anything. Be careful about these terms. And how many days more you want to entertain the flock? It is not a stand for entertainers to stand in the pulpits. You haven't known the seriousness of your condition when you go back home, when you will be examined or when you will be cross-checked for your very word what you have spoke and every idle word, Argatha's word, which is not in accord with the original language of the scriptures, you will be judged. And not many men to become preachers, he says in James 3, 1, you will have a bitter trouble, great trouble. Better examine today itself and correct your life. Do the work and will of Lord God the Father, not your work and not your will. Like the way having 
Isaiah 48 5 they graved their fetishes and they thought this is God and they thought they bow down to this God today as well the denominations are running with various names what they have grooved themselves with this fetishes they have forgot what is the right content in the Bible. They forgot what is exegeomai. They forgot what is to make disciples. They forgot what is to make them to grow up as grammatias, as New Testament scribes. In Matthew 13, 52, we find that word in the Greek grammatias. They forgot the burden, what it is given for us as great commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, to make disciples of all the nations. And dear brethren, how many days more you want a kid and make yourself to be draws? Sanctify yourselves, we shall learn this word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we go to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Are we really draws? What is the word draws for us? We find two great references, even in Ezekiel. But in Psalms 119, in verse number 119, we find this word as draws, siyuk. And what is this siyuk? That is nothing but refuse. And what is that sug? It has been originated from. The word meant to say to backslide, to be turned, or driven back, or repulsed. Figuratively, it has been called as apostasize. Where there is no proper exegeomai of the word of the Lord of a God, or proper revolution of the word of the Lord of a God, as Bible says, the people will perish at one end. And here he says it is a dross to him. You need to wake up. Are you dross? Is your ministry dross? See you seg. Is it apostatized? Or is your ministry declined, repulsed? Or your ministry looks into the word of the Lord of a God as the Bible says and does the work of Christ? Can you examine how many disciples are there in your ministry, like John the Baptist who had, and they went and recited to Christ my Lord, what the things he thought, what the things they practiced. Can you find anyone under your term? We are not saying to have divisions like Cephas or Apollos, or someone would come as Paul. No, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we are saying in one spirit. If you really believe that you have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church given to you, then have you been trained very well upon your knees for over a decade or two so that you can preach the truth, so that you can, your tongue could become the pen of the rediscriber and preach the truth. Doesn't you know if you want to become a preacher of the word of the Lord of a God, it calls for you to give your life after a thorough examination of preparations. Doesn't Ezekiel was being called to be the spokesman of Lord God and yet he was being gone through the process of his examining 390 days to the left and 40 days to the right and eating only 200 measure of weight and that too if he was not asking an obligation to the Lord to say father till my days till from my youth I haven't touched that unclean thing he would have cooked upon the refuse of human excreta. That's what dross is all about. And he passed the examination, 390 days plus 40 days, that is totally 430 days for 430 years. We shall look that afterwards. And after passing the examination, he is now qualified to write for us. And he begins to write about the false pastor teachers. Today, many people don't love to talk because they have come together in one likeness. I will uphold you and I will praise you. You uphold me and praise me. And we shall make in return the people to be destroyed. The flock of the Lord to be destroyed. Don't worry. How many days you may survive on this earth? Lord God knows how to remove you. Because he cannot trust you further to give you his information. The secret of the Lord of God is with them. Who do the pleasure of Lord God the Father. Not the pleasure of their own will. You might have run your church for the sake of your belly. You might have run your church for the sake of your glory on this earth, which is nothing but shame. For some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, you might have run your church. But Lord God doesn't need that. 
He wants those who do his pleasure and the secret of Lord God the Father is with them. Those who do the pleasure of Lord God the Father and the pleasure and the pleasure of Lord God the Father is to nothing but to make disciples of all the nations. And this great commission given to us in this church age. And can you say you have the secret of the Lord? Because the flock that are coming to you, they do not know what is the word. Because we find hardly few people reading the word of the Lord of our God. What does it mean to say? Can you cry out what the word of the Lord of our God is all about? If, it, if you are belonging to the kingdom of Lord God, if you have been sent by Lord God, know you not how the people are absolutely translated the things and they have corrupted the truth. How could you keep quiet? Doesn't my Lord God in Matthew 23 throw out those men and he cried out teaching to them this is not the procedure. This has to be the procedure. Will you have that jealousy in you? Are you really belonging to God the Father as a pastor teacher given to you this bona fide gift? And are you really belonging to have access with one spirit to God the Father as one somata in the Lord or one body in Christ? How can you keep quiet? If you are a hired servant, you will run away. You can keep quiet. Because you labor for your food. If you aren't a hired servant, how would you look? Saying that when the flock of my Christ has been trampled. Saying that the word of the Lord my God, my rock has been trampled. And how can we keep quiet? We cannot. And therefore we say in Isaiah 34. Seek the rush from the word of the Lord of a God, uh, which has been recorded and kept for us. And then he says, Seek and search. No, that's wrong translation for you. The word says in the Hebrew, Cry out, Kara, don't stop when you have known the truth. If we have been entrusted with Lord's greatest glory of all time in this church age, which is nothing but the completed canon of scripture, to know and to live a life on this earth has a legendary impact. And when we go back home to our greater and true life in Christ, to stand in his presence, not to be ashamed, but like an unprofitable slave, we could cry out to God, the Father, Father, that is your will. What is our duty? We have done. We have done it. We don't require any rewards for it. Yet we have been grieved in our hearts and squelched in our hearts because your work, what has been there on this earth, many people are still trampling it out, not being called by you. Yet they've been sent by Satan in scopulation point of Satan synagogue and they're producing false pastor teachers and they're just running out. Help us, O Lord, to establish thy word firm enough on this earth like the way in Deuteronomy 27 8 when the elders would write and leave behind upon their stones a mark so we will be now unto the, your children O Lord and help us to leave behind for the ages to come every word what we speak record and keep so that we could be thy children and the people on this earth could believe that word that would be our prayer how we could ask many rewards before God Lord God the Father we are content with his eternal salvation. We are happy that he is going to prepare for us mansions. That's enough. What else we require in the presence of Lord God the Father? And yet we haven't mastered the things on this earth. Deuteronomy 29, 29 from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 we read the things that have been given for us on this earth, they belong to us. We haven't mastered them yet. And he says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, there are still the things which are there for us in the heaven. And the world is looking, including the so-called false pastor teachers on this earth, to find evidence. Where is the new heaven? They want to look. The new heaven is on this earth itself. And it has begun long back when Christ, my Lord, has been resurrected. And they come now to prove that through proper cryonics or the way in whichever manner they could come in genes or in the terms pertaining to genome technology, cloning technology, whatever they could be. Do you know why? They think their life is on this earth, it, the same terms, and they are pastors for you. We find them. They say they are scientific pastors. Nanotechnology, robotechnology, biotechnology, whatever they could come. These are still morons. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16, there is heaven and the earth, heaven and the hell, and the Terms pertaining to that we find in paradise till Christ could go back home. 
And again, when we come back to 2 Corinthians, we find a man 14 years back, whether he was in the flesh or out of the flesh, because there is no entrance for flesh and blood in the heaven. He goes there to see and he says, those things are not mandated for me to write. Now, what proof you require after you die, you have something great on this earth. Coming back with Christ in the resurrection body, standing in his presence. And always in the book of Revelation we find, these are the prayers of those saints who constantly pray before Lord God the Father. When Lord you are going to give for us this judgment. And these are the testimony for the word of the Lord of our God who have been beheaded. Much more my witness these are. How many more examples you require to live a life of truth on this earth and shed and let go and shed off the life that you are wearing like a hypocritical mask on this earth. How many days more you need? You don't study the word of the Lord of a God, your life will be like a dross. Your teachings are like dross. They are worth and fit for nothing. Therefore the psalmist writes long back. It's a matching number. 119 chapter, 119th verse. Does your life resemble like the dross? It's like a refuge. It's like a refuse, not refuge. And Lord God, he writes this mandate, Thou puttest away Shabbat. In whichever manner you take, in the Cal stem it meant to say to cease. In the Nephil stem to cease. Nephil stem to cause to cease. Or exterminate, you'll destroy, you'll cause to fail. And then we find whether you take in any implied relations, it is nothing but desist or to repose. And it meant to say in simple terms, whether you go figuratively or specifically or casually, it is just a cause to cease. So he says, thou puttest away. And the word Shabbat meant to say to cease. All the wicked of the earth, Russia, what is wicked, the criminals. You may be wearing a hypocritical mask to say you are a pastor teacher, but you are a criminal if you don't come to teach every day the word of the Lord my God in proper exit your mind. You have been termed as criminal. Be aware about that. The Bible calls you Rasha. You may think weekly once is enough and I'm happy in my ministry. That's Rasha. You are wicked. You are criminal. Bible calls you guilty. You are sinning against Lord God. Wake up. If you don't teach every day the word of the Lord of a God, then you are a wicked. You may run your show with gimmicks to this world. The world may be happy, but not the word of Christ. The word of Christ has given you a title called as Rasha, wicked, you are criminal. No matter however you, however you may love to deceive the congregations and say you have done such and such, constructing a church in the shape of Noah boat and say that only the people who would come to this church, they will be saved. And not doing the will of Lord God the Father in daily teaching the word of the Lord of our God, then Bible calls you Rasha, criminal. And the present Christendom has been filled with such Rasha, criminal, pastor, teachers. Because there are even false pastor teachers still not believing the completed can of scripture, still not believing the power given to us to do his work, still not believing that we can make disciples of all the nations, still not believing that we have been absolutely called before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. These are the people they come up with their mind as criminals, wicked men, Rasha, these are. These are not really worth. And Lord God says, he is going to seize. He is going to exterminate. He is going to throw them out as refuse. Our human excreta. Because why? These are criminals. The sooner the better for you to judge yourself in the light of the word of the Lord of our God and throw out these Russia qualities in you. Today, if you are alive, be careful and thankful to the Lord to know the truth that you are like a Rasha in the presence of Lord God the Father, like a criminal, and throw that, what is that criminality in your mind, and come and humbly serve the Lord, because he is going to throw you as dross at the judgment seat of Christ. 
He's going to throw you out as draws for your gimmicks, for your traits. What are you following as a pattern to say that I will please men in the standards, I will make men in the standards. No, those standards, if they're not in the Bible, why do you want to make them up and call weekly ones? Bible says they have to come every day. If they're not coming every day, at least you do your part, crying out the truth every day, recording yourself in the YouTube and put for the presence of Lord God the Father as a witness that we cried out on this earth by doing the work of Lord God the Father in heaven and we are not wicked or criminal or rasha. We are the unprofitable slaves, bond slaves. We are like the prisoners for Christ and we did the work of the Lord and we can say that with great boldness in his presence and our face will not alter. When we are doing his work, neither we will be worried what will be the time of the judgment because we have done the pleasures of our flesh. That's what we read in Ecclesiastes 8, 6 and 7. And the criminals have to face and they have to look. When they stand in the presence of Lord God the Father, they haven't done the will of Lord God the Father. Because they're sinning against Lord God. Now they may be happy. It's better for us to be alone and isolated in the presence of Lord God the Father than to be in a company who are like a fool's squander. Professing wise they become in their own terms, but the word of the Lord of our God says professing wise they become fools Don't be wise in your own consights look into the mirror of the word of the Lord of our God and judge yourselves whether you are still criminals a Russia Grieving and squelching Lord God the Holy Spirit Doing not the will of Lord God the Father Cross-check yourself. Are you still criminals? And how many days more you want to survive in criminality, hostility against Lord God? And prove to your congregation and to the world you're really perfect man. If you don't teach and make disciples every day, you are a criminal. No matter whatever great name and fame you may have in and around the world, because in and around the world you will hardly find few people walking in the straight gate. You will find the people walking in the broad road and you will end up in looking the people in broad road and you will not find the people daily carrying their cross and following my Christ and continuing in his word to become his disciples and walking in the narrow gate. The straight gate people are very few. Therefore the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. We don't want any name or fame or success on this world. We want only one thing, the name of my Christ to be honored. We are not worried about our life on this earth to prove that you are a great pastor teacher because you find so many people following you. You find so much of wealth in you. Who cares? The name and the following and the fame if it is not in accord with Bible doctrine. Who the seldom cares about that? The people on this earth are worried because they lose their market. They lose their face value, they lose their offerings. Because they want to have their life to be survived by taking your offerings and not telling you the truth. If they would come to know they are not qualified by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher given for you from the head of the department of the church. The congregation would depart because they themselves are in a danger not to know what their life is all about. They need to agarro awake from the sleep what they are sleeping and look upon your salvation process. And come to know if you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your duty is to look those things that are about. And shine like the light luminaries because this fortizo is from Lord God, he says in Revelation 22.5. And this fortizo, this light which is from the Lord God, this will be the people they shall reign with Christ. And we want that life, not the life wherewith we could reign with some bunch of idiots who do not even know what is the work of eldership in the church. The work of eldership, if they don't write the word of the Lord of a God, they're not qualified even to be as an elder. Far less they think they have read the word and in, when in fact indeed having grudges with personal terms they have made themselves to become elders but they are not really the elders being appointed by Lord God even to qualify in the episcopal standards of 1 Timothy 4. They haven't even been qualified in those terms. 
because they haven't even read the Bible. Far less Bible demands them. Long back during the time of Deuteronomy itself, they should write Kathab, the describes the description part, the inscription part, the prescription part, and the subscription part to the glory of Lord God. It has been written long back. And yet what are we finding today in our pulpits? We are finding wicked men's criminals. These are not the pastor teachers, these are criminals. By the pious way of life, they may look to you good, but these are criminals. These are wolves in the standards of shepherd's clothing. Because they are sinning against Lord God, not doing his will. And Lord God will seize them out. Be careful about that. He will exterminate them out. Because these are not doing the will of Lord God the Father. These are not making you to walk in the narrow gate or the straight gate. These are not making you to carry up your cross and follow my Christ every day. They come for hire. They have been hired servants. These are claptes, lastes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and sharoras oriented minded pastors who do not do the will of Lord God the Father. They look only for the belly. They mind earthly things. These are Rasha's criminals. And these days, few men are reading the word. Even they don't even match the translations, their thoughts. Far as they could come and dig in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and shape up their life to the glory of Lord God. Few men are reading, very few. And that remnant of a pivot is enough to stand for the witness of Christ on this earth. Because they always mind heavenly things. Because when we go back home, we shall not be ashamed. When we go back home, we shall be the people to say, Lord God, if it have been over here with us on this earth, we would have done greater work. Because of the restrictions we have in the old sin nature, we did sin again. Because we are in flesh, no one is perfect in the flesh. We are sinners. Reaching to the spiritual perfection through this flesh. Our inner mind capable of standing before the presence of Lord God the Father. Not to be ashamed when we are going to receive the resurrection body. He is calling us to move. And when you reach that perfection on this earth, Lord God would pull you back home. That's it. And that's the way Enoch was been taken. He was been seized to marriage. He walked with the Lord 300 years prior to his seas. And he looks upon you as well today, dear brethren. He knew in his omniscient knowledge none to perish. He knew what you will be if you have been still kept alive. He has granted you this grace to understand in the praise of my Christ. So that every day you should come to learn the word of the Lord our God. And happy are those people, he says in Proverbs 8, 34-36. To learn the discourse of Bible doctrine every day. Happy are those. Not every knucklehead who could think he's having a lot of money with him. A lot of fan following to him. A lot of name and fame to him. No, this will never be happy. Because the world is seeking in search of those men. Who think they can have appreciation of human standards but not the appreciation of divine standards they're only looking their life in the humanitarian standards appreciating one another looking one another but not able to look what the Bible says in the divine standards if you would look what the Bible says you would count them as enemy and you will hate them with perfect hatred because though much information has been given to them like the people who came to Jeremiah 42 to ask and Jeremiah comes and tells them, come after 10 days. And when they came, he gave them the word of the Lord of God. Yet they rejected the truth. Even in Isaiah 48, we say, these are the people having and bearing my standards of player of faultima privileges. Yet they don't cry out to me in truth, neither in righteousness. What a shame it would be for us. Even we today are no way far better than to be called as criminals. Because though we have been indwelled by the Trinity, though we have been said to go and make disciples, are we making disciples of all the nations? Then we are also criminals before the Lord. 
Yet he remembers us in his grace that we are dust and he forgives us of our sins and calls you to come up with a great challenge again and make up your life, take up your cross and follow my Christ. Seek those things that are above. Seek his righteousness and his kingdom. Labor for the food which perisheth not and he gives you good health once again to come back and do the will of Lord God the Father. Not to indulge in your lustful patterns of your roles in nature. And yet the psalmist says for us long back, what will be the fate of these criminals? What will be the fate of these Russia-oriented pastors? Rather than Raveda, we call them Rashas. Because these are criminals, these are ungodly, these are not according to the work of my Christ. They which do wrong. That's what the word says. These are the wicked men which do wrong. They're wrong against the word of the Lord. They're not right, they're not perfect, they're not true. If they were true, they would do the will of Lord God the Father. But we find these are wrong. These are criminals, these are wicked men. And therefore he says, you puttest away all the wicked. That is what you will put to cease. And who these are wicked of the earth. It is not Adama, the ground 120 code number. It is Eretes, the inner man. In your outward appearance, you may look good. You may neatly shave. You may wear a good dress. And you call yourself wearing even a cassack. And you may say, you are really a pious man. That's outward ground, Adama. But inward man, the soul and the spirit, it's what it has been referring over here. Eretes, the inner man. Where you are, you're wicked in your inner man, not outward. You look good outward. Go and look upon their faces. They don't come out without having hair dye upon their hair. And these are the people, they will look for you good outward in Adama. But not in Eretes. In Eretes, they are Rashas, they are criminals. They are doing wrong against the word of the Lord of God. And we are able to find ample men in our pulpits except few. Who could come to teach the word of the Lord of God. Accurately as the Bible says in proper exegiomai. We cannot find in your inner man truth. Therefore you cannot call. And what you are, you are hollow in your truth. And we read Bukha Mekuba in Nahum chapter 2 in verse number 10. In the Hebrew it's verse number 11. And what they are, they are waste. The vanity says. Why? Because your inner man is hollow. When your inner man is hollow, what happens? Your heart melts. Your heart doesn't have Bible doctrine to think. When your heart is melting, it shows for you that you're not having a knees that have been for the Lord. Therefore, your knees will tremble. When your knees are not been proper, you are lions will not be great with truth therefore when you don't have strength in you in your lions absolutely you will become as the word calls blackness on your face and your eretus is nothing he says because you are doing wicked against your eretus therefore Job 7 11 teaches to us I will not stop crying out now because my spirit is in anguish my spirit has become for to face the enemy anguish agag. Why you are an enemy for your spirit? Because you don't love to take the word of the Lord. That's why you are having enemy for your spirit. And continually you will meditate upon the pain in your soul, he says. You're inner man again, here it is. And though the word of the Lord of God calls for us, let your lions be great with truth. Let you wear the blessed spirit of righteousness. Let you shod your feet with the gospel of my Christ. And take a large shield of faith and do the will of Lord God the Father so that you can wear the helmet of salvation. And above all, take your one offensive weapon, the remata declaration of Bible doctrine and do the will of Lord God the Father. You say, yet how, Lord? Because you're wicked. You're Russia. You're criminal. And you are criminal for your own inner man. What a shame it would be for us. This Russia oriented men are more in our pulpits today. They may be good outward in the Adama, but inward in the inner man, they are criminals. They are making you to be hollow. And Lord God will seize such Rashas. He will exterminate. He will call them refuse. These are the people who are destroying the name of my Lord. 
Bible doctrine calls them looking upon the time to become disciples and grammatias and yet you say no. Therefore the word of the Lord of God calls you Rasha, criminals you are. You're sinning against me, sinning against Lord God, you're doing wrong. You may be good outward saying that weekly once is enough but the Bible says every day if you don't do and meet the standards of Bible doctrine then you're Rasha. And they will wash out this Russia from this inner man, from this earth. There it is, your inner man. And how does he arrest them? And we find that word in Psalm 119, he says, like dross. And the word meant to say, like human excreta. Because you are not worth. And you are all called as apostasy. The figurative word for this sug in the Hebrew is apostasy. And I will wash out this Russia of these inner minds because they are apostasy to me. That's what the translation should be. Like dross, he says, but they are apostasy. Therefore, he says, I, I have love. Thy testimony is Ida, the witness that the divine testimony is of you because thy testimony is so pure we trust with all of our heart the psalmist says in 19th psalm and that's what we are finding writing the entire description of man in Isaiah chapter 1 thy silver is become dross the wine mixed with water and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin according to the pureness and the word purely meant to say purity in bore of the Hebrew calling it for cleansing never been cleansed like that in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit has given for us in this church age so that we can make you to be pure to stand in the battle of the Lord and to remain and to endure and to be in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict so that when we go back home, we shall not be like this dross, or the way what we call like apostasy. The reason for apostasy is in our pulpits, no proper exegiomai, no proper mirror of the word of the Lord of our God to make you disciples every day. And yet people love Russia more. Let them love. They will have for them what they sow, what they reap. The same thing they are going to reap. And if the church doesn't come together to make disciples, that church is not worth. It may be church in the sight for the community, for the caste, for the denominations, but it is not a real worth church in Christ. We need to make every believer perfect and complete to stand in his presence, he says in Colossians 1, 21 through following. Because of the great bona fide duty given to him, at least to pay a little part of his role, little part to the sufferings of my Christ. To his holy manner walk of life, at least a little part. And yet we are finding in the church age, people not happy to do the will of Lord God the Father and prove that they love my Lord. Therefore, Peter was being asked, do you love me? Then feed my flock. He did not say anything apart from feeding because that's the principal thing why we have been given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to be called as expert over other believers because to teach you to feed you that's it to feed you with love not with murmuring or grudging to train you up to correct your life according to the will of Lord God the Father because we are here to teach to you what it is from the eternity past to eternity future in the same Holy Spirit of my Christ and if that standard says for you, you have to become disciples by carrying your cross every day, then you need to do that. And compromising even a single bit is what we are compromising his essence. And who are we to compromise his essence? Therefore he says in Deuteronomy 12, 2 and 32 as well, nothing you shall add, nothing you shall remove. If you add anything to it, you are adding something to the essence of the Lord. If you are removing anything from it, you are removing the essence of the Lord our God from that. Therefore, when we have this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, our duty is to give, not even to let go, iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, 
but extern, extremely do that which is good and right and perfect in the sight of the Lord. Therefore, the one who walks upright, we need to look. His life has been in the rank of holiness. What is right and what is due, he does. Therefore, we read that verse in Proverbs 15, the one who walks upright is always walking in the rank of his holiness. But the one who is a wicked, he doesn't walk in that rank, but he's making himself to be hedged with thorns around him. And how many days more you want to be Russia? How many days more you want to be criminal? How many days more you think you can guard the word of the Lord being criminal? Lord God has taken our every care right from our birth, coming to the knowledge of salvation. From there on, from saving grace till to the time of our death, including us to move for living grace and super grace and ultra super grace and everything to call to be his disciple on this earth without any excuse. When he has given and made us everything perfect, and has taken our complete care on this earth, asking us to walk in his mandates, asking us to do his demands, fulfilling his pleasure in our life, and pure worthiness. He doesn't give you simply like that. He wants to examine you first. The way have you examined Abraham? The way have you examined Paul? The way have you examined David when he was been there in the great battle of Goliath? He says he was faithful in saving the sheep. So when we are being examined, have we been found faithful to the Lord? Are we doing the same thing, whether it may rain or shine? Have we dedicated our life entirely to the work of my Christ? And if we don't do that, how is it you're going to pass your exam and Lord God could give you further things? You cannot. Therefore, you need to be alert, dear brethren. We have been taken into the complete care of the Lord and He says, you are my philos. Only when you do what I have given to you in completion and telos, and plus telos, completion of the word. Whatsoever mandated you, if you do that, you are my philos, he says. And he has mandated us what? To make disciples when you grow up as disciples. And that's the theme of the Bible. Make disciples. Because for the taunt in Luke 4, verses 6 through 8, when Satan came and says, I have all the authority. I will make you just bow down to me, the king, and I will give you the glory of this world. Christ says, no, we shall bow down only to God the Father in his humanity. And he makes us now to have authority what Satan had and calls us to go and redeem the people from the clutches, from the blindness, and make them disciples of all the nations of all the nations and those who perish let them perish if they don't believe the truth but you be a witness for truth looking upon you when they cross check everything in you you should be a great sample to them to say yes this is a sample of christ in him and he's a living exhibition of christ and they should have an innate desire to look upon you when you remember that your life is christ even they will also believing in christ should have that peace and they should be manifested for christ as disciples that's what we are being called we have been modeled to be like Christ. That's what we have been stated for us. And why do you want to die sin unto death, dear brother? Don't die so. Our life is something unique and great. Let the world look upon us and see Christ in us, the hope of glory for them as well. Why do you want to die as Russia? You are a traitor to my Christ. You are worth and fit for nothing except taking yourself to be at the judgment seat of Christ, being called workers of iniquity. And he would say, you, I know not who you are if you don't make them disciples and daily teach the word of Christ. Dear brethren, keep apart your name. Keep apart your identity in Christ. What you may be, you may be PM, CM, or you may be president of your country, you may be a great rank in your country. Humbly kneel down before the presence of Lord God the Father and ask Him to correct your heart, to put right things in your heart. And say, Lord, from today I will become thy disciple. Because it is thy glory what we are enjoying. It is thy grace what we have, nothing else than that. Come down humbly in His presence and meet the standards of His divine word. Becoming grammatias as disciples joined, growing up to be New Testament scribes, and in return, 
make disciples. That's the great command given to us. Whatsoever, he, whatsoever we perform, then only we are his friends. And we have something great in this church age to become and to make his friends more and more for Christ. Because the effectual working power in us, it is not by our strength, but it is purely by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who uses them who are determined to do the will of Lord God, the Father sanctifying themselves every day to the praise of his glory. He cannot use them who are still Russia sinning against my God. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leads us in the same divine presence of his glory to learn his word and to teach his truth. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall have this eternal life. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season. And the word herald, kerugma, meant to say, we are here to know about Lord's birth, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. And when we have come to know that, we humbly come down to face the fact that we are sinners and we need Christ in our lives. And thus we come to Kerugma to teach that with true repentance of our heart, experiencing the forgiveness of my Christ, becoming a new creation in the Lord at the moment of salvation, and now applying that for us as we grow up to our standards of maturity and show forth this kerugma wherever we go as the great salvation of my Christ, as the living knowledge of his fragments to be spread forth for pleasing to God the Father and rid him as much as we can from the snares of death, those who are sitting in the shadow of death and pulling them out as much as we can from the fire of hell. This is what our kerygma should be every breath. And for the pastor teacher, it is to preach the word, no matter whatever it is. Whether they may be hearers or phobias, preach the truth. And above all, and we need to look upon the damn from our witnesses, the indwelling trinity followed by Bible in our hands. And if there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire unwilling really should be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. But remember, you cannot be a Russia when once you have been cleansed. You need to be born slaves to the Lord rather than Russia in your mind. We cannot be traitors. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will challenge and bless us by this message. So that Sovereign Lord, the trust that you have given to us, we could show back our love to you. And when you have found that we are really worthy of your love, Father, you have said to Peter as well, to feed the flock, tend the flock, feed the flock. Help us, O Lord, to do that in your philosophy love, rather than having our own thoughts, knowing about God. But let us to look, knowing God, serving in your energy, being bold enough and to do be content wherever we go either by life or death to glorify thee to the maximum such as diligently father and see if there's an offense away in us lead us in the way of everlasting truth in christ much less prayers gracious name we pray father the lord god the holy spirit and challenges by this message amen